right. And that recess will allow us to mount it on the lathe. And that should hold the whole thing tight. And there we go. Yeah, that's much more reasonable looking thickness, I think. Man, redwood's easy to work with. Can we get this puck of redwood for some other project for the future? For a mold today, is actually a two liter soda bottle here. And I've got one where I've cut off the bottom. And all I want to do is make a groove where this fits in. I think that's it. Tripped over my tripod. Having a good day so far. I have been using Honey to save me money on purchases online for well over 18 months. I actually installed it based on a recommendation from another YouTuber. I cannot think of any drawback to having a coupon wielding helper watching over my virtual shoulder while I shop. It knows about every coupon code, sale, or discount at over 20,000 sites like Amazon, eBay, Newegg, and more. Since installing Honey, we have saved hundreds of dollars on purchases. When you get to checkout, it just steps in automatically and saves you money. Honey is for everyone because it works for practically anything you buy online. Look, there's really no reason not to use Honey. It's free to use and easy to install on your computer in just two clicks. So shop with confidence. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Peter. That's joinhoney.com slash Peter. Thanks to Honey for sponsoring this video. Let's get to the rose. This was a fresh cut rose from Mrs. Brown's garden. It takes about a week to get to this point, but um, I think this one's been here a little longer than that. So this should be good and dry by now. Need this to be a little shorter than it is. There. I think that looks like a rose and it's got some leaves still on it. And um, I think it'll work really well for what we want to do. And we should just be able to use a little glue and get our rose in there. Yeah, it looks really cool and it's got a really dark color to it. And here are a couple of dried petals that I found in the flower bed. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Ta-da! That's it. We're all done. Put a cap on it. Isn't this one beautiful? I had to cut off the top because it didn't quite fit in the pressure pot with the um, spout on there. So this was a two liter bottle. We've cut off the bottom, we've cut off the top. So we're probably around 50 ounces, um, I guess. There isn't a single resin that I've used to this date that I can pour 50 ounces at once without it overheating and destroying itself. So Justin reached out to me from the Grand River Wood Company and says he's been using this product to make river tables and he never has to worry about it overheating and he can pour it in large volumes. It's a little different than most of the resins that I use in that it is a two to one ratio by volume. You use two volumes of resin to one volume of hardener. We're gonna mix up 60 ounces of resin. Wow, it's just like water. And we're gonna pour that into the large mixing cup. There's our first 20 ounces. And then we're gonna pour another 20 ounces of part A in here. That goes into our mixing cup. We need 20 ounces of part B. It's very thin. Both, both side A and B are very thin. That's interesting. It is 98 degrees out today. 
I don't know if that's playing a part or not, and that should give us 60 ounces, which is a ludicrous amount of resin if you're not pouring it out onto a flat surface. Oh wow, it just goes crystal clear there, super fast. You see that? It went from sort of opaque to crystal clear. One more stir of the water, water substance that I'm going to pretend is going to harden into something usable. This is cool. Woo! All right, now we get to find out if our hot glue holds. We're going to pour a small amount in. Do you see any leaks? Do you see any leaks? All right, I don't see any leaks. I don't see any leaks. I guess we can pour it the rest of the way in. It's hard not to hit the rose. Hopefully that'll repair itself. If I could go back in time just even 15 seconds, I would have put this in there first. right up to the rim. We have eight ounces left in our mixing cup, which means we have 52 ounces of resin in this pot. 52 ounces of resin in a small space like this should absolutely overheat. I don't even know if this stuff will work in a pressure pot. And that's all there is to it. Oh. Wait. That doesn't look right. That looks brown. Really brown. All right, so let's jump slightly into the future and talk about where we're at. This is the casting you just saw come out of the pot. It's clear, it's hard, and the rose is perfectly centered. There's just one little problem. The rose is brown. <laughs> it cooked it. Really weird. Uh, I was not expecting that. It's perfectly preserved, but it's not exactly what we were going for. So, I figured the problem was the pressure pot. This one was done without using the pressure pot. Same volume of resin. It also didn't retain its original color. But it's, it's working on its way to brown. You, you can see it's about halfway between brown and green. So let's talk about version three. The only thing that's different between version one and version three, this is only 40 ounces of resin. And I put it in the pressure pot. I mean, it came out perfect. It looks exactly like it did when it went in. We're going to cut this, this brown rose off and we're going to mount Mark III on its base. I'm going to pretend the last seven days never happened. Let's see what it looks like. That looks perfect. Guess we got lucky this time. What I'm gonna be turning with today is a half inch bowl gouge and it just needs a quick touch up. And this is the Kodiak jig from Wood Turning Wonders. And that's all there is to it. When you start with a sharp tool, it makes everything else so much simpler. And cuts like butter. Look at these huge, thick 
things were getting off of it. It's crazy. It's like uh, Easter basket grass. It's just incredibly thick and really hard. and switch over to sandpaper. The first grit will get rid of all those ridges and then every other grit is just about getting rid of the marks of the grit before. And this is 800. So now we need to finish this surface. There's a number of ways you can do it. For me, the one I like the best are these micro mesh pads. I've been using them for years. They've got nine polishing pads. They start at 1500 and go through to 12,000. That's a crystal clear board. It really came out beautiful. That's really pretty. It looks like it has a glass dome on it because it is so clear. I'm telling you, if I'd have had to do this three times, this would have made me crazy. <laughs> I'm super happy I only had to do this one time, because that would have made me <laughs> insane. And as you turn it, it changes. Yeah, you get a different view. Because this one ended up being a little closer to the side of the mold than my original casting. I mean, the only difference between the two is just a few ounces of resin. I think it's really, really pretty. I don't see it. I like it. Cool. Rose under glass. Done. First try. <laughs>